<laughs> Sorry. Had to make sure it was loud enough to be captured by all the mics. Um, right. Course number one. Yeah, chapter number one. Chapter number one. Okay, so um, this chapter is about the high level goals of race track setup. So, and like that, what kind of boy you want to attract? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, at, at a high level, um, what you want to do with racetrack setup is to maximize a thing called the grip circle or friction circle mm -hmm. and to allow or give the driver the confidence to fully use this grip circle or friction circle what the circle is about okay yeah so that's what the, <laughs> that's what the first slide is about <laughs> okay. so what is what is this friction circle um hello there in my day job, I create control software for active suspension systems. And with this channel, I aim to demystify racetrack setup, whether that's for sim racing or any other form of motorsport. What the circle is about? Okay, yeah. So that's what the, <laughs> that's what the first slide is about. <laughs> okay. So what is, what is this friction circle? Um, so it's... Um, it's, it, it's this graph which basi basically plots the uh, vehicle acceleration capability in all directions. Um, so it, it shows the maximum capability of the vehicle um, due to the, yeah. Uh, so it's a combination of the grip that's generated by the tires and, mm -hmm. uh, and, the, vehicle, and, the, and the vehicle weight, vehicle mass. So the bigger this, um, this friction circle is, the higher the performance of this car is. Okay. So um, the units are typically say in G's. So okay. G, yeah, yeah then G that is, makes sense. Okay. Otherwise, like how big it is depends on how big you want to draw it. All oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for example, um, that, that could be one G in braking. Okay. And then, um, but then yeah, a faster car could, could have like higher limits. Rhythm, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, the the friction circle determines how how f how fast the the car can brake, can corner, uh, and can accelerate. And so you want this to be as big as possible. Mm -hmm. And the bigger this is, mm -hmm. the more it helps all the drivers. Mm -hmm. um, Wait, did, and what is it about this direction? Oh, uh, right. So this is accelerating. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is turning left. Mm -hmm. uh, this is braking. So it, and, and and this one? Oh, that's that's turning right. Okay. Yeah. yeah then, sorry. Then it's fine. Okay. Yeah. It, it 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 might seem a bit weird in terms of why braking is you know going up and or Acceler you know, forward. accelerating is going it, down. Yeah, yeah, accelerating is going down. Turning left is with the it's arrow so to the right. The the reason is um, will be more bec will become more clear in later chapters. So um, just bear with you for a moment. Right. It, th this is just the um, the sign convention which makes a lot of um, later things easier. So you didn't invent this. I don't think so. So okay, this then... this system can be seen in many like telemetry programs. Okay. Or so I can trust this graph. I don't. I yeah. mean, I don't trust you. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, interesting to see is that it's, it's a circle, which means that there's a trade off between um, longitudinal, so that's braking and accelerating, mm -hmm. and cornering. Mm -hmm. So, it means um, you can have, uh, say, maximum braking, mm -hmm. or you could have maximum cornering, mm -hmm. but you cannot have both at the same time because if you if you if you're trying to do maximum turning and maximum braking at the same time then it lies outside of the of this circle so if you add if you shift this uh, arrow to here then the combined so basically you're telling you're saying that you can't have a coordinate with which is X outside. and Y, right. um, if you're trying to have both on their max value. Right. Okay. Yeah. You, you can have a bit of both, 
uh, but you cannot have the maximum of both. Mm -hmm. It's not a it's not a square okay. because that would be a square. Um, and yeah, so the um, the reason is the tire the tire can only do so much. So mm -hmm. the, the the capability of the tire to generate grip is limited. Mm -hmm. So then you have to choose what you want to do. Do you mm -hmm. want to be a, do you want to accelerate or, or brake or do mm -hmm. you want to corner? You okay. cannot you cannot do anything uh, everything. Mm -hmm. So you can have a little bit of both. And that's okay. Uh, that is with that lies within this uh, this fric friction or grip circle. Um, and in general, if you do a little bit more uh, braking or, or or accelerating, then you have to be doing a little bit less of uh, of turning. But this is um, why is this important? So uh, the. Um, First of all, it's important to understand this so you don't ask too much from the tires. That's, of mm -hmm. course, very clear. But also it means that the driver is able to influence the, um, uh, the oversteer and understeer of the car by, by either accelerating or, or braking. Because if... Okay, so this is not only about setting the right. setup of the car. It's, it's, also, it's also about, about the handling right. of the car. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because say you're uh, you're cornering and then the driver suddenly um, forces the car to to brake or accelerate on on. This on... why it spins. Yeah, yeah, okay. indeed, yeah. Okay, so um, high level goal of race car setup is to make this circle as big as possible. So for a typical street vehicle, we have a one g limit, uh, mm -hmm. g being gravity. Mm -hmm. So that's. Um, Roughly 10 meters per second squared, mm -hmm. but anyway, so it's, it's uh, say, we're sitting on our chair, we feel 1G of um, acceleration. When you're turning or, uh, or just down for us? Yeah, so um, Earth exerts 1G, 1G of acceleration. 1G, that I know. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. And uh, typical street vehicles, uh, whether they're turning or, or braking, they have roughly 1G of limit. Okay. Yeah. Um, but for race car, they want to make it as big as possible. So mm -hmm. if we go back, this is a typical you know street vehicle. Mm -hmm. This would be, for example, a Formula One car mm -hmm. uh, at low speed and uh, at high speed. The difference between these two circles is that at high speed, there's all the aerodynamic downforce, which adds uh, additional load on the- So on this is the same car and have two graphs. Right. Okay. Yeah. It, it might seem strange, but so for a uh, for a vehicle without any downforce, mm -hmm. then it would it wouldn't oh, be too much. Oh, I get it. So actually, yeah. when yeah. when you have a higher speed, oh, when yeah. you have a higher speed, it means that you almost have a different car because your tire behave probably different. You have more traction uh, and downforce. Yeah, in this car, in this case, because it's a Formula One car um, at high speeds, there's a the, lot of downforce. there's a lot of downforce, and that adds to the the grip that the car, okay. the, the car is able to generate, and um, the yeah the reason that <laughs> um, in accelerating uh, it's able to accelerate faster at low speeds that's simply due to the gearing effect and the fact that the power is limited. If the engine power is unlimited, then these circles would be perfect circles. But because you only have so much engine power mm -hmm. uh, due to the gearing and the mm -hmm. aerodynamic drag, then at high speeds. You cannot accelerate as fast okay. as at low speed. Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah, to maximize the uh, the size, then you just want to maximize the grip from the tires, uh, minimize the mass of the car, so make the car as light as possible, and to uh, also you want to yeah minimize the loss from load transfer. Mm -hmm. uh, load transfer. Okay, it's a bit of an abstract um, concept at this point, but it's, uh, it's like when you break you. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So when that happens, the total grip from all four tires added together reduces. And why that is, we'll, we will get that, to... That, that's a very academic explanation. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. That's fine, yeah. Right, yeah. So we want, you want to if, uh, minimize the effects from s such kind of events. Uh -huh. And you want to give the driver the confidence to fully use what is available. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's no good if you have a very large... Um, Circle. Friction circle, but then you don't know how to use it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Hi there. The clip that you just watched is from a course called Fundamental Theory. 
It's one of the courses that I created for racetracksetup.com to help sim racers and anyone else interested in motorsport master racetrack setup as quickly as possible. If you're quick enough, this particular course might still be open for enrollment for free. If you enjoyed the video, then as the cheesy saying goes, like, subscribe, and share.